EVs are bad for the environment. There, we said it. They're back again. The people telling us all these very definitely true things and certainly not in any way biased or manipulated facts. Uh, but uh, I've got uh, Mark here from the Tesla Life. We're going to go through the whole thing. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. I don't know if you saw this article you sent to me, but here we have uh, the the New York Post uh, doing their usual yellow best. Electric vehicles release more toxic emissions are worse for the environment than gas powered cars study. That doesn't sound right, does it? No, it sounds like the same old narrative that we've heard uh, from other uh, FUD uh, producers, and uh, it seems like it's back for another round. You'll love it. Uh, this, this one, no, it's different this time. They got new BS to share with us, Mark. This is <laughs> exciting in a whole different way. Electric vehicles release more toxic particles into the atmosphere. Wait a minute. That's very specific wording. And are worse for the environment than their gas-powered counterparts, according to a resurface study. The study, pu published by emissions data firm Emission uh, Analytics, was released in 2022 but it's attracted a wave of attention this week after being cited in the Wall Street Journal, another bastion of definitely not uh, false narratives about EVs. That's for sure. Yeah, it found that brake dust and tires on EVs released 1,800 times more particle pollution compared to modern tailpipes. What? what? Brake dust? That's the one that threw me right away. Brake so first, dust. first of all, first of all, break dust uh i saw a great post on x uh i think it was the president of the tesla owners club of india uh showed a car with nine hundred thousand miles or something ridiculous an electric vehicle with like some insane amount of miles maybe it was ninety thousand. i don't remember because he used lock which is a measurement of numbers i don't understand uh brakes were still good brakes were still good because it uses regen um, but this is comparing tires to tailpipes. Hmm. Yeah, they they skip that over completely. Uh, they just talk about tires and, of course, brake dust, which makes no sense. But tires only. They're not really talking about what comes out of the tailpipe in this article. They're more concerned about particles that are coming off of a tire during its regular wear cycle uh, over the life of the vehicle. And it's ignoring the wear on tires from a gas powered car because gas powered cars. I don't know if you know, also use tires. Uh, and considering the article, the study is, was released in 22, presumably from cars prior to 22, it doesn't necessarily add up. So let's start with, um, are EVs automatically heavier than gasoline powered cars? I would say that EVs are traditionally heavier than their counterparts. Mm -hmm. Somewhere between 20, 30% would be a guesstimate at this point. Okay. Now we can talk about, for example, BYDs definitely heavier because they use LFP batteries, which have less energy density. They require larger batteries to get the same amount of punch. But if you look at a Tesla Model 3, it weighs about the same as a BMW 3 Series, which is a comparable car. Well, guys, well, yeah, but I'm comparing it to a Camry. Why are you doing that? It's not the same car. At the very least, you'd need to compare the highest spec Camry with the lowest spec Tesla to get comparable features and comfort. So I'm, that's, you gotta, you compare the weight of the Model Y with the BMW uh, X3 or X5, it's right in there. It is comparable. Yes. Um, and but then, unfortunately, this study compares it to a, a Kia Nero. So a Model Y compared to a Kia Nero is what they do. Mm -hmm. That's definitely very dishonest. So what I did is I went ahead on over and I looked at the study itself. Uh, and I found that a lot of the conclusions in the New York Post article are not quite uh, as it seems. These are not exactly what they're saying they're saying that yeah the the tires are much worse um but that's you know kind of where it ends but even still the study is comparing 
tires on one to just emissions on the other and not tires plus emissions. And, and I should mention also the tire wear that you get is entirely up to you. I have 6,000 miles on my Model Y and I'm not seeing any real uh, tread reduction yet because I don't take it out of chill. Why would I? I'm not that much fun. I'm just not that much fun. I know it for a fact, people. <laughs> he knows. Mark knows. They grabbed some charts. And, and look at this. I mean, right here, considering you're at 1.0 and tailpipe, it's this, this uh, should tell you what's going on. And it also compares all part, uh, particles under 10 microns, uh, which would be PM10, as if they're PM2.5 and below which is wrong. That's definitely wrong. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's wrong. Uh, so uh, right before we, we started recording, Mark in the green room shared with me uh, some, some more great news. He said, no, Brian, you misunderstand. These are good people. They're honest people. Why? If we just look, it says right here, assured, independent, and responsive. Isn't that great? You guys, I mean, who who's funding them? The off-highway powertrain and fuels? Or the non-road powertrain and fuels? Uh, ah, this That's is, a, just a coincidence, isn't it, Brian? That's just a coincidence. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm, I've just, you know what? Uh, the pit boss at the casino, also independent. I'm sure he's got my best interests at heart. I'm sure he does. And these guys do a lot of work um, about tires. Tires is really their, their big thing. But a study like that, that's just dishonest at, to a degree that uh, defies understanding. So in the article, let's get back over to that. We see some real, some real humdingers here. Uh, the biggest one is it talks about the weight because it, EVs are 30% heavier. Why <laughs> a half ton, a battery weighs a half ton, a half ton. Did you know, uh, the Tesla model Y has a battery that's 1800 pounds. Does that sound right to you? It sounds a little heavy. Sounds suspiciously heavy. Uh, <laughs> if only there was a way to look it up. <laughs> Uh, so here we go. Uh, this shows that the battery does not weigh that much, that this one, which has the seats and the carpets and everything on it is only, I think, 1100 pounds. So it is, it says it here somewhere. I shall find it for sure. Uh, 1198 with the seats. Now the article wouldn't lie to me, would it? Cause I feel like I've just been lied to. <laughs> Um, it's also this article was released in 2022 and it took an op-ed in the new, in the, uh, in the recent publication to push this forward again. So this has already made the rounds two years ago, and now it's back again because an op-ed, uh, was, uh, pushed it forward once again. Uh, it's, it's, it's dishonest, it's lazy reporting, and, uh, it's, it's an insult, uh, to people that, are trying to figure out what the truth is here. Just to keep spreading FUD is not helping anyone understand what's really happening out there. You're just trying to confuse the audience at all times. You know, you have a trade-off at the moment. The political agenda is very strong towards climate change reduction. Oh my gosh. We're going to really, we're going to politicize just pollution, just plain pollution. Uh, but these toxins, uh, can cause asthma, low birth weight, uh, according to the New York Department of Health. Well, yeah, don't eat tires is, I guess, what I would say. The other one, it said, uh, by the way, the tires, and it might have been in the study itself, says, by the way, the tires are made of oil. <laughs> Do you know that? Do you know that tires are made of oil? No, it's 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 remarkable how these uh, are, are they suggesting we should not drive on tires on EVs? Should we just skip them? Just just drive mm -hmm. on air. That's what mm -hmm. they want us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, seven gallons is how much oil it takes to make a tire. Seven gallons. Yeah, uh, I can. That's that's not even a tank of gas. So two tanks of gas and you've gone through four tires. That's guys. 
guys. It's exhausting dealing with such a massive degree of dishonesty, you know? It's very difficult and frustrating at times. Uh, what should we do, man? What's the solution? What do we do about all this nonsense? The study that's, that's throws a... doubt on the pr practicality of the Biden administration's EV mandates. So uh, I don't think it was, I think the efficiency mandates go back decades, ever increasing efficiency mandates. Yep. There is no, uh, in a quest to force two thirds of new cars to be all electric by the year 2032. No, no, there's a, a handful of states, seven at last count, that want cars to be all electric, but I'm not aware of a federal level initiative. I mean, There's they, none. they need to be, they need to, I believe, still hit certain efficiency standards or buy credits to offset their inability or unwillingness to do so. This article, which I am not sharing, this article is, uh, ridiculous on that front. It is, it is, uh, it's, inventing boogeyman very yeah. frustrating it's just slinging mud back and forth trying to confuse the audience and it, it it continues to be a dishonest offering uh that's put in front of the public electric cars still use tires made from petroleum oh that's crazy i saw a vegetarian once say well yeah but when you eat a burger you put lettuce and tomatoes on it checkmate Right, meat carnivore omnivores eat. That's, uh, I don't want to ruin the surprise. You'll find out when you're older. <laughs> very, very silly. Yeah, it's frustrating. In the comments, and we're not done yet, but in the comments, I'd like to hear from you. How is what is the best way to address these? A lot. I've seen people who say, "Don't give it any attention." Yeah, but that just lets the lies stand as if they're facts. I'm not comfortable doing that. That's my thought. Yeah, it is. It is tough to combat this type of thing because, of course, uh, you've got big money on one side that is putting these into opt-eds and pushing it out to further and further to other media outlets. And lazy reporters uh, tend to grab things and copy and paste and put it out again, put their own little spin on incorrect data in the first place. So it, it's difficult to combat this. You can write. You can write into the paper or the publication and indicate that these facts are wrong. But my gosh, there is a lot of uh, time you're going to be spending trying to correct these large publications on things that I often wonder if they are just doing it on purpose. So, uh, first of all, in the case of this one, it is absolutely on purpose. I don't know what their agenda is other than to be sensationalist trash. That's my firm belief. That's all this is. It, this is... <laughs> This publication may be malicious to their core, but I think this is just lazy clickbait. Uh, I spent a lot of time, I spent a good month doing daily reviews of bias in headlines, and it was eye-opening. But what a lot of people would say in the comments is, oh, well, this just proves that that publication has a bias. And I'd say, no, because I can track the DNA of this story, and it all starts somewhere, and then the lazy people copy it. And that's why... The consistently best scored for favorability of headlines was BYD, because all of their stories originate behind the Great Firewall of China, where journalism is not a right, it's a privilege. And so all the stories about BYD were favorable, and then when these clickbait publications pick it up, all they have to go on is positive uh, headlines. If they wanted to spin a negative, they'd have to actually stop and think. It's so much easier to not think, Mark. I don't know if you've tried it, but oh, it's the best. <laughs> and imagine if you get paid the same for an article that you regurgitated in 15 minutes as one you spent a whole day researching. <sighs> so that's that's my take on that. Um, there's plenty of malice out there, but mostly what I see is just journalistic laziness. Be interesting to see what what the what the people what you out there think we can do to stop this type of lazy journalism. Is there anything that you found effective? And I would agree when you said you could spend all day writing letters to the editors. 
I think the only way you could actually make that work is if you had segments that you would copy and paste and use over and over and then just kind of customize it based on this particular piece of garbage. But then the risk is because it's not 1980 is when you email these, they just go to a junk folder and they're never seen again. Nobody actually reads them. So I don't know what the solution is. Uh, I know there are people on YouTube who have tried to get the ability to submit stories to places like Yahoo news unsuccessfully. So, (laughs) so the terrible people can do it, but the honest ones, not so much. In the comments, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? What is your suggestion on how we fix this problem? Not fix it. How we address it. How we respond to it. Because I'd love to know. Uh, The video is where I hope to make you guys smarter. And the comments is where I hope you'll make me smarter. But I don't know if there's any hope left. Because I'm just very thick. Uh, So. Uh, head on over to uh, check out what's going on with uh, Mark there at the Tesla Life, where they do a insanely good weekly update on all the things you may have missed uh, and the things you didn't also. It's very comprehensive in that way. By the way, you know, there's a book called Everything I Learned at Harvard and another book called Everything They Don't Teach You at Harvard. And between those two books, I think you've got the sum of human information. Right? It's got to be all in there. Got it so, all there. It's all there. Two books. Done. What did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it into them in the comments below. Stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you, Clever Robots, uh, next week when I get Mark to come back uh, and share some other interesting news. We'll see how it goes.